Howdy, name's Rain. About two years ago, I published a video on a very similar lunch break to this one called Construction Site Culture Sucks So Much. And out of all the videos that I've published, all of the t different topics that I've talked about, whether it's how AI won't ever kill us or how aliens, we, we don't need to be concerned about them or any of that kind of stuff, it has been the video, the Construction Site Culture video has been the one that most people have watched and most people have liked and commented on. The comment section is the one metric that I look at on every video because comments are the reason that I make YouTube videos. I like reading comments. I like talking to people. The whole reason that I started making YouTube videos was for the comment section and currently sitting at over a hundred thousand views several thousand likes and several thousand comments um, that that video has gotten the most comments and I appreciate and read every single comment that I get I've said that in several videos and I'll continue saying it I read every comment that I get but the thing about that video is it's a pretty good barometer to me of exactly how everybody's feeling whenever they're talking and exactly what everybody thinks about what I've said um, and, and there have been the, every comment section on every video that I've made has an average comment, has, uh, if you were to distill the entire comment section down across everything that everybody's saying, everybody kind of says something similar. And in that video in particular, there was a lot of similarities between a lot of the comments that were being made. And I, as I, as I sat there one day reading through the comments, I thought, you know, I should make a, I should make a video where I respond to every single comment on my YouTube channel. That should, that's what I should do. <laughs> I tried to do that and I, it was about 11 hours long. <clears throat> that was, uh, that, that was insurmountable. Um, but over the course of that 11 hour live stream that I did last week, I did distill the three main comments and the three main things that people were saying in the comment section of construction site culture sucks. And I boiled them down to three different sentences. Number one is that I should quit. The point of the video was highlighting the issues that exist on a job site on an interpersonal level. The reason that any adult gets a job is to make money. Everybody knows that. That is just, that is what motivates you to get out of bed and go and do a job is that you're hungry or you got to pay the rent and you need to do a job to be able to make the money. Um, I, the number of people telling me that they really feel my pain and that they think I should either quit or become my own boss is it, it's, it's the majority of the comment section. And so I want to clarify for the vast majority of the people who left comments on that video that I do not want to quit. Okay. The job that I'm doing is what I have always wanted to do. Whenever I was about nine, 10 years old, I started working with my grandfather in his shop behind his house. He started teaching me how to repair electric motors, pull pumps, well pumps, table saws, every kind of motor that ran on AC current, he taught me how to repair that. And I loved it. I loved working with it because I've got a very technical mind and I love details and I love complexity and I love being able to work through a problem, a complex problem, a puzzle. And to me, an electrical circuit is a puzzle. Now, hopefully, as your job as an electrician is to make it not a puzzle for the next guy that comes along and looks at it. You need to do a good enough job where it's clear what's going on. But it's it's got so much detail and so much depth to it that I, I like working in the electrical trade as an electrician. I am an electrician. I am not a helper. I am not an apprentice. I'm not a master electrician. I am a journeyman electrician. Um, and that, that is something that I want to do as a career. I want to be an electrician for my career. Now, I, I can't quite make that succeed if I quit. The reason that I was upset in that video and the grief that I displayed in that video was not with the job. The job is exactly what I want to be doing. I'm getting up at 4.30 in the morning and going to work, not because... I want to punish myself. I am getting up that early in the morning and driving an hour and a half to get to a job site because this is what I enjoy doing. This is what I have invested myself in, time and body and money, and this is what I want to do until I retire, May 16th of 2061. This is what I'm going to do. I don't want to quit. The toxicity that exists on a job site is an issue. But that's not going to make me quit either because I can change it. 
the point of the video was to highlight the toxicity, not to say that you should run away from it, because if you've got a problem, the solution is not to run away from it, the solution is to fix it, okay? I posted the video, and a, a lot of people in the very beginning were commenting about how I should be nicer to my coworkers, and that is 100% true. I do need to be a positive influence on the people around me because that is what's going to change the culture. And I'm happy that so many people in the beginning were saying that. And I don't know what's changed over time where so many more people have just said to quit. I guess maybe it's because it's, a, I don't know, a change in the, in the work culture overall in, in the nation. I, I don't know what the deal is. But I do know that I can change the culture of my job site. And I can change how people behave by how I behave to them. That is something that I've known my entire adult life, my entire working life. Because whenever I first started at the supermarket that I worked at, before I got into construction, everybody was, everybody was upset because they're all working minimum wage jobs, an uninspired workspace where they're just putting cans on a shelf all day. That's not fun. But I knew how to raise morale with the way that I acted and with the way that I presented myself to my coworkers. And it did make a serious impact on the morale. We had a camaraderie going. We had fun together. Even though we were doing a menial task for very little money at the supermarket, we were having a blast. And I've told stories about how, you know, I used to draw little pictures of zebras everywhere and everybody would go look for them like it was an Easter egg hunt and talking about me skateboarding up and down the milk aisle because I don't know, nobody's in the store. We're working after hours. Why not? There was, there was a lightheartedness to it and a good morale to it. There was no toxicity because whenever I came into the job, I realized these people are not happy to be here. So... Let me be a positive influence. And it worked 100%. Then I get into construction. And it's a lot harder. It, it, it faced me as a, as a more difficult task to positively influence morale because there's a lot more people. And a lot of people who are working for other companies besides mine. And so there's a lot more variables that I have to influence in order to actually have a noticeable positive impact on the minds and the attitudes of the people that are around me. And so it did take a lot of work. And it took a lot of learning to figure out how the best to talk to these different people who came from a completely different background than who I was working with at the supermarket. I had a lot of, it was a culture shock and there was a lot of learning that I had to do to get into the mind of the people that I was working with. And eventually, it took a couple of years, but I feel like now uh, I'm, I'm pretty good with creating a a good working environment for people who are my helpers, my apprentices, um, for my boss. I, I feel like people can be not toxic on a job site. And if they are, I know how to influence them without being a dick to them. And the second comment is that people want to quit their jobs. People will go into the comment section and talk about the different horrible experiences they've had on job sites, terrible co-workers, terrible bosses, uh, terrible conditions, and I, I get it. I, I know that, I mean, everybody does have a bad day at work. Everybody has a bad week or a bad month. Everybody has, everybody has bad situations at work, but the solution is not to quit unless you are being physically assaulted at work. Unless there is some super critical issue. And I can't know everybody's situation. I, I realize that there's a lot of comments that might have been, you know, the, the quitting is completely justified. But I, I want to stress that working in construction is no different than working any other job in terms of the difficulty that you face. Sure, somebody that's working in a cubicle may not have to do anything but use their fingers. They might not be exposed to, you know, fall hazards or trip hazards or overhead drop hazards. They might not be exposed to the same kind of stuff that we as construction workers can be exposed to if we let our guard down. But the, the toxicity and the interpersonal problems can happen with literally any job where you're not working completely solo. If you're not completely alone, 
if there are two people doing the same thing, there's going to be a problem between them at some point because human nature skews towards conflict. Anybody who has spent any time around people knows that two people cannot exist in perfect harmony forever. And if you're on a job where you're only there because you have to be there for financial reasons, you have no emotional attachment to what you're doing, the, the chances of having a conflict are exponentially higher. So you're going to have it even if you're not working in construction. You're going to have problems with other people. And the point of the video, yes, was to highlight the toxicity and, and the, the problems with the culture where people will act in a trashy manner or be abusive to each other in some, in, in some fashion. But it was also, by letting you know that this culture exists, it, the, the point of it was to highlight it so you can change it. You can change the culture of a job site with the way that you present yourself to people. You're having an issue with your boss, change the way that you behave towards your boss. Don't be aggressive with him. Don't be angry with him. Don't be mean to him. The whole fr the, the phrase, be the change that you want to see in the world, is... It's it's done to death, and so nobody pays attention to it. It sounds like some motivational speech that line that you would see hanging on a painting in a dentist's waiting room, but it's true. And if <laughs> if it wasn't said so much, and it wasn't done to death, people would actually pay attention to it and learn from it. Wanting to quit is a sign of being defeated by the situation that you're in. And I'm, I mean, you know, some, sometimes the, the, the problems are insurmountable, but oftentimes they're not. Oftentimes you can change the safety culture of your job just by insisting on wearing the PPE that you got to have. And if somebody doesn't like the PPE that you're wearing, screw them. If somebody tells you, man, you need to take them safety glasses off, screw them. Wear them anyway. But I don't know how that is. I, I can't say that I know exactly where that headspace is because, again, as I've said before my, and said in the construction side culture video, my company has a brilliant safety culture. So I don't know. Maybe there is something particularly stressful about being told to take off PPE and compelled to do something unsafe. I wouldn't know. I've literally never experienced that. But I feel like it's a common enough problem of somebody's trying to compel you to do something that you shouldn't do or don't want to do and... You know, there's there's ways of handling that and diffusing that situation that do not require you to give up on the income that you are depending on for food and housing. Okay? People who are asking me to quit do not understand the point of the video that I was making. I love my job. I love the career path that I am taking. I want to continue to pursue this. Because the culture on some job sites can be very toxic, that doesn't mean that I should run from it. My solution is to be a positive influence on the morale, on the culture, and to change the way my coworkers behave by being the change that I want to see in the world. It sounds stupid when I say that too. Like I've I've heard it so often and heard it from so many different sources that it it just it, it's it's like listening to a preacher say you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. It, it's it, it's cringe to hear it. It's like something that we hear so often, we cringe at, no matter how true it might be. But the third comment that I've received the most often is, you got soft hands, boy. I'm going to tell you something, boy. Them people that use bad mouthing, they built this country, and they weren't safe either. They built this country without any hard hats on or without any safety gloves or glasses and that darn fall protection harness, boy. I tell you, you act like safety ain't no obstruction to, to production. OSHA wasn't created to keep us safe. It was created to steal all our money and make us have to do things slow. You out here bad-mouthing your co-workers what they think of your video, huh? There is a 94% like-to-dislike ratio on the video. 
the overwhelming majority of the people who have seen the construction site culture video have liked it and have left positive comments. And I sincerely appreciate that. But 94% like the dislike ratio means that 6% didn't like it. And what often I find is that the people who dislike a video are the ones who leave a comment. And it's upsetting because again, as I said at the beginning of the video, the comment section is why I make YouTube videos. I like reading comments. I never ask you to like the video. I never ask you to subscribe to the channel. I've never asked you to click the new little heart-shaped thank you button underneath the video next to the subscribe button either because that's not what's important to me. What is important to me is the comment section. I want to read what you have to say. And oftentimes I learn a lot by reading the comment section. I appreciate you for commenting and I want you to please keep doing that. There's nothing more sad to me than publishing a video that gets thousands of views and hundreds of likes and like two comments because I feel like I failed at that point. I feel like I did not get what I what I put into the video whenever nobody really comments. It's sad. But on this video in particular, there have been boatloads of positive comments. There's also been a handful of very nasty ones from people who felt called out in the video, from people who felt offended by the video, who felt like, well, I'm a convict, and he's talking bad about convicts. That means he's a bad person. No, oh, he's talking good about safety. Well, I don't like safety. I don't like that safety director for our company because he's always telling me to put my glasses on. I don't want to put my glasses on. The things that I thought about that video would offend people did, and I'm not surprised. And... Honestly, like, I mean, the people that say, well, those people that you talking bad about built this nation. Well, the uh, the International Ice uh, Brigade that goes around looking for icebergs and all that, the, the people that built the Titanic didn't know that they would cause that to exist. And I don't think we really have to get into whose idea the Autobahn was. I want you to understand that I'm not bad-mouthing people. I'm bad-mouthing the culture that they propagate. Thankfully. They're a minority. They do stand out and they do affect me because, you know, you can have a thousand heroes and one villain, but everybody always fixates on the villain. Nobody remembers the heroes. Everybody remembers the bad guy. And so, yes, the, the construction site culture video did misrepresent the number of good people on a job site. Although I did mention them. The video was not about them. The video was about the bad guys. It was about the people who negatively influenced the morale by the way they talk to others, by the way they handle themselves, by the way they influence the safety culture. I was thinking of people with the brick masons and people with the sheet rockers and people with the welders whenever I made the video. Three different trades besides my own because there's like one or two representatives from each trade that act like that versus the, you know, the, you, the welders have 40 or 50 people. The sheet rockers have 20 or 30. The masons have 100. But it's the, it, it's the one or two bad apples with the barrel situation. So, yes, they built the country. That doesn't give them an excuse to act in a way that damages the morale. That does not excuse them negatively influencing people that are looking up to them as helpers or apprentices coming up that want to learn from an example. That doesn't excuse them for setting a bad example from, uh, from production, from toxicity, from a perspective of safety. That doesn't excuse behavior that is not correct, that is bad, that is a negative influence. So you can hate me for the video all you want. You can hate the, the perspective that I presented. And you can leave all these nasty comments. I, I usually click hide user on them basically as soon as I see them. Because I don't want you to contribute to a negative culture using me as a stump to speak upon. I want people to work in construction because it is a very good industry to work in. The skilled trades, skilled labor, is a phenomenal way to make a living. A good and stable and consistent living. Where you don't have to worry about getting a different job as long as you put your back into the work. Yes, I got soft hands, boy. 
because I wear cut resistant gloves while I'm working all the time because I've got helpers and apprentices that I train whom I want to work safely to protect themselves from the hazards that we can face so that they can continue to use their tools for many years to come. I'm happy that I can work in an industry where I can be a positive influence, not just on my coworkers, but on the people who will use this building for 50 years after I'm in the ground. This building that I'm parked in front of is my legacy. And there's not really any other way for me to eke out quite this large of a legacy. If I wasn't in construction, my headstone would be three feet tall. Because I'm working in this industry, because I am an electrician, my headstone is a million and a half square feet long, wide. It's huge. And yeah, it may not have my name written on it, but half of the junction boxes, thousands upon thousands of feet of the cable was all put there by me. And the bonus is I get paid to do it. And I get to work with people that a lot of them I like and a lot of them I'm learning to like. And it's the one that's that I just can't learn to like. I'm trying to be a positive influence on them so that someday I can. Because we're all people. None of us is a one or a zero. I am to you because I'm on your phone screen right now. And hopefully, as I continue to read your comments, I can graduate past that. But I need you to leave me comments. So please, comment on this video. And every other video that you find of mine that you find helpful. I don't upload very often because I don't want to upload pointless garbage. I want it to be in some way useful. So I'm careful with how I upload. So you won't see very many videos from me. But. Anyways. Distilling all of those comments down to three. Was actually a little bit easier than you might think. Because a lot of people have similar experiences and similar things to say. But if you'd like to see an undistilled version of all of the comments, not just across the culture, the construction site culture video, but of all my videos, there is an 11 hour live stream in the live section of my videos where I respond to every comment that I could. I couldn't get through every comment on the channel. It took me 11 hours to get halfway done. And six of that was on the culture video. So if you, for some strange reason, want to hear me drone on with my stupid little nasal voice for 11 hours, feel free to help yourself to that live stream. In the meantime, my lunch break is done, and I got to get back out there and build this building. Y'all have a good day, and be nice to your coworkers.